Why, hello there, my fellow dwarves. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, episode 29, Sunlit Dining. Just have all non-stationary artifacts in a vault. I mean, I could, uh, but I'd rather just... I, I, I'm fine with them being stolen. I kind of enjoy that mechanic. And then that means that, uh, that the temples that we have at least get better decoration. You know, it's way, way, way nicer as a result. Yeah, I'd rather benefit from the artifacts. I mean, there's a way to do it where, like, if you designed your temples to have a um, to have a channel around it with a tiny little bridge to the artifact and then still have that artifact be part of the temple, you can have the artifact be inaccessible, but also still technically part of the temple, right? Like, you could super engineer it to be unstealable artifacts, I think. This is just me theorizing and I've never, never actually done this, but I'm pretty sure that would be possible. Um, you know, if we really wanted to get technical. So that each each artifact has a mini, like, tiny bridge that allows you to get to it. Or put it behind, like, wall grates or something like that, exactly. Or put it put it in, uh, behind wa uh, glass blocks or some, something. You know, there, there's a way to protect your artifacts, and, and maybe at some point we bother to go that route. Uh, I'm just not all that concerned for now. The bridge, is, the bridge idea sounds neat, though. That, like, sounds intriguing channeled out and all because dwarves dwarves can't jump um other thieves but there might be a chance i don't know about all the other species that could steal from you but i know dwarves aren't going to be able to cross a uh a one deep channel without you know yeah they're just not without like a flying mount which <laughs> i'm not going to have in abundance uh all right so the trade 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 oh we're there sweet let's get rid of all this crap so first things first, a list of parts. You can like basically have them for free. I mean, not not really. Uh, I do want to buy the platinum bar. I wouldn't mind having more platinum. We have a. I don't really care about animals at the moment. Right now, I'm mostly after uh, food items and leather items. So let's just go all the way down there. So here's all that lovely cow leather. And pigtail cloth. Dang, you guys are hooking me up. I might not even have the money for this. In the bins that I brought. Holy moly, this is a lot of fabrics. How many wagons did you bring? Jesus. All right, well, uh, let's not get ahead of myself because I might not be able to afford all this. So just selling my lovely porcelain for their stuff. But I, I'll probably need to transfer in some more valuables to be able to buy everything I want because I'm just about out of porcelain goods here and I have not balanced the trade deficit even a little bit. Still deep in the red. Some of the really expensive boxes, the silk boxes, um, drive up the cost more than the leather. But I'll, I'll definitely want to send more bins over here because I want to buy this leather. Seriously? You guys are still profiting an enormous amount. There we go. Okay, trade. And then move more goods. I 
I actually might not. Oh, there's a 6K box of finished goods. So I'm sure that will have plenty for the remainder. I need to do some uh, gem cutting. I have a lot of rough gems, but no, not really any cut ones that I can see. One, no, I have 24 cut gems, or 25. And that's another big box of finished goods. Okay, so there will be more trades. So we'll send those new boxes in and I'll buy the last of their, uh, the last of their textiles. I like how they're still trying to kill her. All right, I'm going to tell them to stop. She's obviously not here anymore. I don't need them chasing no one. Doesn't help. Hey, Tangier. Goes pretty well. Cheers, dude. Welcome to the stream. Where's that last bin? There it is. I also didn't buy any plump helmets, which if I can afford, might as well, because I haven't really been farming with my guys, so getting a bunch of plump helmets for, through trade is uh, is probably smarter until at least I ramp up the amount of farms that I'm running, because I, I really don't have a lot of active farms. I have like maybe 18 plots, which is not very much. All right, so that's all their all their cloths. Oh, I'm going to get carpal tunnel just from the uh, mouse scrolling. And then here's some of the cut gems. Probably want to keep a few cut gems, uh, particularly the more expensive ones, so that if we do have a, um, a strange mood, we're using the nicer gems for the strange mood to drive up the price of the artifact that we make. That's a pretty good strategy is to sell off the cheap gems so that all you have left are the good ones. That way you don't have to worry about not having good gems for moods. Come on, turn green, trade. Greedy traders. Buying all my porcelain. Yeah, there, it's green. Ta-da! Alright, that is tons of stuff. Probably the most amount of trade that I've done to date, I'd imagine. We're almost done uh, digging out the walls for the last level that we have. And then it is straight to the dining room. Where we bust through the roof of the dining room. With the ceiling of the dining room and then uh, spill all of this dolomite and jet everywhere. <laughs> Nothing like a very messy success story. Oh, no, there's still plenty of time left in the stream. You're not too late. Some migrants have arrived. Okay, so I, I did open up our pop cap to 78. And we filled it perfectly. Uh, I don't know if... I'm going to have to find the migrants through bedroom assignments, I think. Because they already lost their migration. So, Cattle, the cheesemaker, 
Iden the Shearer, and Lytas the Fish Dissector. It's just uh, just a cursory look at if whether or not they are suspect to be vampires. So Cheesemaker, uh, you suck at combat, so I think you're clean. Then the Fish Dissector, which is, uh, where, where are they? Kib. I'm so bad with names, Dwarven names. They're so, so unusual that my brain just, like, deletes their existence. So Iden is who I'm looking for next. Iden the Shearer. They're a dabbler fight, dabbling fighter, uh, but that's not too unusual. It's if they had more skill than that, I'd be more worried. And then the last bedroom goes to... Bedroom 64 goes to Lytast, the fish dissector. No. Not very skilled in anything. We're clean! Macho, thank you for the bits. And welcome to whatever's left of this stream. <laughs> your tardiness will be noted in your file. I'm kidding. I am out of glass. Well, I guess we wait. Uh, the ban on ballista parts. Oh, shucks. I have just sold them all. Sorry. Happy little tree, but you're a little late. They're gone. They're already in the wagons. <laughs> She's going to be mad. But I'm okay with that. Keeping your your nobility happy at all times is uh is laborious. So one of the ways to find out uh, whether or not you've exposed the sun, I'm just going to do something weird because I can, is to uh, is to have a cavern floor, like an unsmoothed one. Um, so see how in the top it says like shale cavern floor? I don't have any unsmoothed stuff here though, that's the problem. Whoa, Critical Foxes, thanks for all the gifted subs, man. Cheers. Thank you so very much. Hope all is well with you. A lot of familiar names got gifted subs. You know, for that, let's have another raffle. How's that sound? All of you new subs that just got subbed to the Critical Fox's gift uh, are eligible in this raffle. So, might as well run one. All right, there we go. So putting down a pillar and then deleting it, you can see that this is a cavern floor now. Uh, so when this gets revealed to sunlight, uh, it should no longer have the word cavern in it. That's kind of the only way I know to to tell whether or not something is um, as dumb as it sounds, whether or not something is has sun or not. Other than the, the other way to tell is to uh, muddy the stone and to see if you can't plant surface crops but you can't plant crops on stone that isn't muddied and you muddy stone by running water on it which would require like a bucket brigade and a lot of cleanup and a lot of annoyance so it's easiest to just throw down a pillar and delete the smooth floor somewhere and then try to uh and then see it that way What are we raffling? We are going to raffle off... Uh, ooh, one of the most upset dwarves just lost their upsetness. Awesome. Uh, we're raffling off one of the legendary people in our community. Maybe... 
Ooh, we're going to be raffle. Maybe this weaponsmith, Datan Aiden Mamot. And Autumn Nerarel, whatever their name is. Those two are going to get raffled. Raffled for names. So she wants more shields. Fine. I'm going to make them out of iron because I don't need good shields right now. I don't think I have plenty. Let me double check. Yeah, I have 15 spare steel shields. So like I absolutely don't need more shields. We're almost done with the... Um, with the walls of this shaft of skylight. Which is very exciting because I've been basically working on this all stream. Because it's such a mega project. So the next cavern that I dig, the next channel that I dig, is going to be straight into the dining room. That's what's below us. And I'll recap the purpose of this project for all of you to know. So in a Dwarf Fortress, if you don't get enough sunlight, what ends up happening is you get a medical condition or a permanent ailment or something called a cave adaptation. Basically, you've lived in the cave so long that if you are ever again in direct sunlight, um, you will be irritated and you will vomit and it will cause you harm. So the way to avoid cave adaptation is to have your dwarves regularly be exposed to sunlight. And the way I'm doing it is the, um, the dining room that we have and the tavern that we have is going to have a window uh, above it so that anyone in the tavern and dining room, which my dwarves typically spend some time in the tavern and dining room, uh, will indeed get some sunlight and hopefully avoid cave adaptation. We did vote originally that I will also do that to the Great Hall, but be because of how long it takes to um, to make the glass and to channel the channels and all that, uh, I'm going to make sure that that's still wanted by having you vote for it again. But if you don't want to vote for it again, you want me to work on something else, that's fine too. Why are you sleeping here? Oh, because I haven't assigned you bedrooms. You know what's weird is I have a dorm. Why aren't they sleeping in the dorm? Why would you choose to sleep on the floor and not in the dorm? And also, no, I take that back. This dude does have a bedroom. Where are you? So this is Sotal. And he has bedroom 17. This is his bedroom. What the hell is he doing sleeping on the ground? Did he just pass out drunk? <laughs> like, he is shameless. So there's that. I don't know why he's sleeping there. Like, that's a choice. And he's blaming me for it. What a loser. Alright, so here is the final channel. Channeling down into the dining room. Finally. Oh, um, because we're channeling down into the dining room, I actually have to be careful about how I channel here. Because it's, uh, there's not stone underneath. So, um, I gotta channel a little bit differently. So, I gotta channel from the edges or otherwise, um, it won't work. It also gives me the opportunity to channel the stone underneath. Mr. likes to sleep on the floor and then complain about it. So, that's fun. Jake, congratulations. You are going to be uh, one of the legendary dwarves. You're going to be one of them flashing. Uh, this weaponsmith. And then the other one I was going to raffle off is going to be JT, who won a, uh, a Patreon raffle. So that was... Someone, someone's blinking. Olin. Cool. I don't know if I have any other legendary dwarves here. That aren't combatants. Oh no, I have uh, 
Well, they're an axe dwarf. What are you legendary at? Carpenter? I might want to take him off of axe dwarf rotation, because I don't want to lose a legendary carpenter. Although, with that said, um, there's not a lot of quality that the carpenter matters. Right, like weaponsmith or armorsmith, they make things that are heavily driven by quality, whereas a carpenter not as much. So maybe it's not much of a concern. But congrats. So there's a lot of armor in here that is um, super banged up. So I'm going to start melting it down to the new armor. Man, super banged up. Well, better it's banged up than I am. That might be where some of our boots are. Maybe that's why we are we were one shoe. Because uh, everyone kept getting hit in the same foot over and over. Just a theory. Uh, did I? Okay. I channeled kind of wrong. But, uh... These tables here? Why is there a slope here? What is... What is even there? I'm so confused. Why would there be a slope? Because we smoothed it? Um... Yeah, if you look, uh, the floor underneath these tables... And I think it's going to be easiest if I construct a, a wall in the, one of their locations, is illuminated now. So I'm going to get the... a column built here, and then I'm going to destroy it, just so I can show you that one is a cavern and the other isn't. So I'll do... I'll do two of them. Meaning that uh, we're letting the light in. So see how this just says shale, and not shale cavern, up in the top middle? So this is shale cavern floor, and this is just shale floor? Uh, that means it's uh, exposed to light. AKA, our uh, cave adaptation project is finally a barren fruit. What is the distance uh, that we can hold up a roof because I don't want the whole thing collapsing unless I mean to collapse it. Maybe I'll try to purposely collapse it. That'd be wild. I probably shouldn't do that. I'm going to save just in case I screw something up. Um, don't collapse. You know, my inexperience, I don't want the whole thing crashing down and like mass murdering people. Because I haven't done a project like this before. So, just want to be a little careful. Just a little bit. You have to detach something totally to collapse it? Okay. So as long as I work back towards the stairwell, I should be fine, right? And have the uh, tiles adjacent from the stairwell close in. Something like that. So I did say, first pass at this project is only going to illuminate the dining room. But if you want me to continue this project, uh, you're welcome to vote for it. And the caravan is taken off. Oh, I'm glad I saved, because... Uh, a second after I save, I crashed a desktop. Lucky me, I didn't lose too much progress. That could have been annoying. Because I only save typically once every season. So that was a pretty lucky game save.
The other thing we don't want to do uh, before I start to... Um, before I completely remove all of the floors in this area is I'm going to want to finish the window because if it starts to snow or something, it's going to look a little weird that my uh, my dining room fills with snow. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it, it, it would look funny. I bought all those plump helmets, so I might as well cue my farms to use plump helmets in all seasons. And that's already done. Oh, no, I did collapse. Oh, just the corner piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to uh, cut the corners out first. Did that collapse through the floor? All the way down to the tavern? Holy cow. That's a... Uh... That's a hearty collapse. Now I'm forced to stick a... Uh, I mean, eventually this was going to be uh, glass anyway, but I'll have to put a glass floor in there now. Just because I busted it up real good. I always forget to do the corners first. So the this corner of my tavern is illuminated from the the sun. Just that one spot. Wagon train. My, that axe dwarf has just been stumbling around for like years now, not able to get himself out of depression. How far do, ahead do I record for YouTube? Um, so what I typically do is I'll stream for five hours and then take those five hours and cut them into six episodes for YouTube. And then air those six episodes each one each day after the, uh, after the stream. So that if you watch the YouTube that's up to date, you will be completely up to date with uh, with the streams. And I do that for everything. Uh, we have a thief, and they're at the top of my staircase. Jerdo. Jerdo has a copper... Okay, he has a terrible weapon. It's going to be easy to smush Jerdo into nothing. So now he's in my tavern. And there's an axe dwarf already closing in on him. Uh, is it Dave? No, it's, it's the new axe dwarf. One that doesn't have a lot of good skill. Doesn't matter. First swing, and I think Jordo's arm fell off. And he's dead. I gotta say, these humans are pretty foolish uh, thieves. Because they show up and... Uh, I pretty much immediately die. So let's let's check out who killed that uh, that human there. Uh, it was Dave again. Dave hacked left hand. No, maybe it wasn't Dave. It was a different axe dwarf that ended up uh, cleaving the skull. Oh, good. Someone else got the kill. Uh, was it you? Military kills... Yep! It was Rygoth killed uh, Jerdo. Well, you had it coming. You're here to steal. I'm very eager for us to have this windowed up so I can uh, not have this massive, massively vulnerable staircase. That makes it very easy for us to get stolen from. Yeah. 
Look at all the glass blocks that I have. I have 278 glass blocks right now. And uh, most of them are already used in construction. That's just, it's ridiculous how expensive this project is. But, uh, but you guys voted on it, so you can't be wrong. I was actually eager to do it, too. So I had 12, what is this? This should be all the glass, no, uh, four glass left. That's another weird thing that ends up happening, is if you've ever noticed in your stocks, it will count things that, um, like if I take a look at the glass, it, of the 278 glass, all but like 12 of it is already built. So if I go to like, where is this glass? Uh, well, this case it was in a bin, but in most cases it's actually part of a construction project already. Um, the same is true of like, if I check uh, steel armor. Like this breastplate is being worn. It's not like in a stockpile, it's actually on someone's body. Uh, but the, the game counts it anyway. It's some it's something that definitely confused me when I was new to the game is like, wait, it says I have like 50 iron bars. And it's like, no, I don't have 50 iron bars. I have 50 iron bars that I built into a bridge or like 10 bridges. And it still counted like I had 50 iron bars because that's just the way the game works. For better or for worse. I also feel like uh, if this hole was at the top of the mountain, we would have some weird super villain lair or something. Ooh, look at this. You've claimed the scrolls workshop. This is the first time I've had a strange mood for scrolls. So we're getting some legendary literature. The Enchiridion. That's what we're doing. We're going to get ourselves a copy of the Enchiridion. Making some Elder Scrolls? <laughs> I like it. He's sure taking his time. He's like strutting towards it. Oh, there he goes. Uh, he is, so far he's brought Dolomite. Why you need Flex? Well, I guess that's for the roller. So it's going to be a, a Dolomite rollered uh, choir or something. Query, whatever it's called. Poor dining room. I did say that this was going to be a uh, a result <laughs> of uh, tunneling down, but yeah, you can see the mess that we're making here. Absolute mess. Can you imagine being in a dining room and having the roof removed and like hundreds of tons of rock just like fall willy nilly and somehow it doesn't hurt you? Like these dwarves have one crazy constitution because like this dolomite here is 285 kilograms, right? Or the, well, the jet's not that heavy, 132 kilograms. Still, I wouldn't want a 132 kilogram object dropped on me. Uh, even more would be the limonite, which is 379. Uh, that might be the heaviest thing that we've been dumping here. The microcline is only 256. But yeah, there's tons and tons and tons of material just just getting absolutely dumped uh, on those that are below. <laughs> they must have really good spatial awareness to dodge it. Yeah, must. Absolutely. I'm glad dwarves don't mind being around stone, because, uh... Well, this is one littered room.
You feel like that would be a normal hazard? Yeah, I suppose they drink out of like stone mugs. They probably used to, and and they have, they run around with like kegs of of alcohol that weigh a ton. So I think it's I think it's pretty normal. Like these these kegs here weigh like eighty kilos. <laughs> they just run around with them. Oh, my personal supply of, of, of ale. And it's like a 20 kilo or 80 kilo cask of alcohol. It's like, Dwarf, don't you weigh about 80 kilos? Like, how are you? Do, you, do you drink your weight in alcohol? And yes, the answer is yes, they do. Oh, I am like at a glass. What's the holdup? Uh... All right, I got to do some investigations here. I have a lot of pot ash. I have no regular ash. Uh, I'm guessing because we just haven't been burning it on the the wood furnaces because we've been making charcoal instead. Okay. So the bottleneck right now is wood furnaces. Uh, okay, fine. I'm going to add some additional temporary wood furnaces to speed this up. Because I'm not even close to the amount of glass that I need. I have like half as much. <laughs> That's how painful this this uh, project was. Because it's not just this window, right? Because it's the entire floor of the dining room eventually will have to be glassed. You want me to make more ballista parts? Oh, lady, lady, lady. Cut it out. You have an odd obsession with ballista parts, and it is concerning. It also looks like I'm uh, out of pine again. So how many trees... Oh, the goblins are at war with me. Oh no! You've already sieged me, of course. Uh, I have 23 trees left to cut. I think they wanted me to keep it under 25. Um, but whatever. I'm going to go up to my limit, I think. Push it to the limit. And it's a bad day to be a pine tree in my forest. I haven't been counting, so I hope I haven't clipped too many. Good enough. Walls should have been made of glass as well. I don't need to eliminate walls, though. Because there's no cave adaptation benefit to having illuminated walls. So I'm just doing what is needed to be done, bare minimum. Uh, the hunter is working, so it is... He's using steel, dolomite, jet, pine, and wax opals. I have no idea what he's making. It is a dolomite amulet. And you made it on the... Oh, because this is just the Scrolls Workshop, but it's technically a craft store's workshop. And you claimed that amulet as a family heirloom? It's fine. I can still use it in a temple, though. Which I don't need right now. So you can keep it. Stick it in a box. Be proud of it. Something. I don't, I don't know. But you can see, like, this person, for instance, um, is getting sunlight. Like, all the people here are getting sunlight in the dining room now. Because this dining room has a clear, clear path all the way to the sky. Oh my god, I still don't have any glass? The other thing I might need to do is to get magma forges or magma glass furnace before I um, glass up this. I don't think that it's all that reasonable given the limitations of uh, wood 
unless I start importing wood on trade caravans. I don't think I'm going to have enough wood to make the ash to make the glass uh, outside of magma forges. So I think in order to get a cave adapted tavern, I'll probably need magma forges first. Which means I need to go to the magma layer and then probably screw pump it all the way up here so that I can craft with it. A way, way big project is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. I'm also flat out of shale, according to the canceled things. Really? Yep. Shale. No, I have shale. Maybe. Wait, that's part of a jet upward slope. That's not shale. Well, if I need shale, uh, shale's actually pretty easy to get. I'm going to mine out space for additional temples. I have been adding uh, people to the colony. Uh, dwarves, specifically. Not just people. Uh, which means that... I might want... Um, to build additional temples for those people. So, I'll mine where the temples are going to go, and that will offer me more shale so that I can uh, keep working on cutting shale furniture and the like, because that's my, my chosen material to build with. Unfortunately, for the specifically these temples, these temples are mostly made out of shale, shale blocks and shale walls, so I'm not likely to net too much shale off of this project. Does green glass give sunlight bonus to dwarves, or only crystal and clear? Uh, green glass works as well. Actually, you don't even need glass, technically, uh, Rob. Uh, once you've, once any map tile part has ever had sun sh shine on it, it is forever illuminated. Um, physics works in strange ways in Dwarf Fortress land, so. Um, so technically I could have done this project by just digging a hole and then putting like wood planks over it and it still would have worked, oddly. Uh, I'm only doing it with glass because it feels more fair than just slating it over and then being like, it's illuminated. It was in the year 107 and somehow there's still sunlight in the room. Um, yeah. Until Dwarf Fortress changes that mechanism, like, there's actually no need to use glass at all for sunlight. I just want to. All right. What the heck is with the glass slowdown? So these glass furnaces... Let's go to the... Let's go to the work orders. Figure out what the heck's going on. They don't have pearl ash or coal. Oh, dang. All right, so if I'm running out on coal... What I need to do is to stop uh, smelting whatever I was smelting and start making coke from Bitu Coal and Lignite. I didn't realize that I had run out. So I'm going to uh, give this a high priority so that we do it over any other queued up task. And that way we should have enough coal uh, to continue this project. It also means that it might be a good idea for me to go into my uh, cavern area. What was that? F Four, five, F5, and look for Lignite or Bitu Coal. Because it looks like uh, it's a. I'm somewhat bottlenecked on Ignitables. How's my Flux done? I think I probably have tons of Flux, though. Um, dolomite. Yeah, I have like 340 Dolomite. Uh, coal, where are you? I think we found previously we found Bitu Coal on these levels. I still have so much uh, magnetite on this level. Is 
There's limonite in the walls. Tiger eye. Colonite. No, I wouldn't mind colonite. Let's auto mine the colonite. Auto mine the the um, tiger eye. I'm gonna avoid the limonite for now because I don't need more iron. And then I'm gonna decide not to do mining shafts any lower than elevation 30. So elevation 30, I can still build in. So I'm trying to avoid excavating any level that I might want to. Um, uh, any level that I might want to to build in. Um, but I have a lot of colonite here to turn into porcelain stuff. So we'll do some of that mining and hopefully that will reveal some more coal or lignite. So that's what was holding up the glass, is I just ran out of fuel. Again, uh, further reason to incorporate magma forges. So the, I haven't ever spoken about magma forges yet, but if you take a look at the furnaces, there is um, there is magma versions of the glass furnace, magma glass furnace, kiln, magma kiln, smelter, magma smelter. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to process that material without fuel using magma instead, but the magma has to be directly underneath the uh, the kiln or furnace itself, um, which means in order to do that, we have to dig pretty deep into the into the ground and then find the, the magma layer, because it's down there somewhere, and then pump that magma up to the smelters. You don't have to pump the magma up to the smelters, but if you don't, anytime you want to smelt something, you have to carry it down like like dozens of flights of stairs, melt it, and then carry it back up dozens of flights of stairs, or use mine carts, and that's kind of inefficient. It's easier just to pump the magma up and to have the magma closer to where your workshops need to be, in my opinion. So, food for thought for future projects. And, yeah. I'm now all of a sudden getting more glass because the bottleneck was uh, Coke. Didn't have enough Coke. Oh, so here is some Bitu Coal. Found some. And some onyx. So here I just, uh, if you go to mining and you go to the right arrow here for advanced options, you can do all would just be you select where you want to mine. And then auto is it automatically mines out the material that you've designated. So like if I designate up here, if I designate any piece of this bit to coal, it will mine any adjacent piece of that bit to coal until that vein runs out. So I don't even have to mark it all. Um, and then if you want to see that done soon, I'll just mark it with a one. So now my miner is going to go up there and any piece of bitumous coal that gets revealed uh, will be mined as a result. Like that. And that's a really good way to just go, hey, I want this specific material, just go to your heart's content until you run out of uh, new until you run out of material to find and it, it doesn't it doesn't uh it won't automatically tar target any other new material so as you can see there's cow in here which is used for porcelain which would be a target for uh auto mining but because i hadn't selected it it's being ignored and then all of the additional uh, mining tasks here are one tasks because the original one was a one task so that's a whole lot of bit miss coal uh instantly revealed and at this point, I probably don't need any more Kalanite because I don't want to make that much porcelain. So let's cancel this stuff. I was mostly just, uh, I mostly just selected it because um, I wanted to reveal some bit too cool. But what I can do is I can have like these, uh, the gems. So this uh, Sardonyx and the Tiger Eye, the Morian clusters. I can 
uh, tag any gems that I find because the gem, the gems don't tend to be expansive. You know, you mine a little bit and they're pretty finite. But yeah, auto mining is really nice. It's a feature that RimWorld does not have. Uh, that it would be nice if that existed. And there's mods for it, but it's not native. All right, back up to the surface. This window is getting smaller by the day, or the hole is getting smaller by the day. And there's only a tiny bit left of the ledge. So almost the entire dining room is now uh, illuminated. I haven't checked anyone for uh, whether or not I do have any cave adap adapted uh, individuals in the colony, but uh, I, I kind of doubt I do. Generally, the cave adaptation is if you've been playing for a very long time and you've been subterranean for the entirety of it, uh, not going to the surface to haul things like, um, like wood or corpses or fighting or anything like that. So the individuals that usually are not going to get cave adaptation would be your woodcutters because they're going to go to the surface to cut trees um your children because they're going to go to the surface to haul unless you uh unless you uh, burrow them your fishers unless you're fishing exclusively underground you know there's a lot of ways that the the typical worker won't ever uh hit cave adaptation levels But engineering a solution where we can avoid it is very nice. You didn't know that was a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing, and it's definitely to be avoided if you uh, if you want to do surface stuff. Also, the uh, the sunlight will stop miasma too. So if another good place to do sunlight would be uh, fisheries and butcheries, because your butcheries and your fisheries are te typically where you have miasma occur indoors. And if you mine shafts for light there, um, you can store fish and meat that won't outgas to miasma. It will just rot, but it won't make everyone wretch around it. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, which originally streamed live on Twitch January 24th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow dwarves. 